Hello boys and girls. Today we're going to read a book called Across the Alley. What is this called? You're right. This is called the cover page. And then on the back we have the back cover, right? All right. So this the title of this story is called Across the Alley by Richard Michelson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. So we know that Richard Michelson is the author and E.B. Lewis is the illustrator. All right, let's jump into the story. Here is the title page. All right. Every night after Grandpa turns out the light, I count to 20 before I tiptoe out of the bed and tug open my shade. Across the alley, I know Willie's doing the same. During the day, we don't play together, but at night, when nobody's watching, Willie and I are best friends. Last winter, I watched my fingers spell out hi, H-I, through the frost on his bedroom window. He wrote each letter backwards and then waved. I heard the ice cracking as I jimmied open my pane. My daddy was a starter in the Negro Leagues, Willie told me, and he says someday I'm going to pitch in the majors. The next night, Willie showed me how to throw a real big league slider. He knew just where I would, I should stretch my fingers across the stitches. And here he is writing high. When spring comes, I sit out on the stoop down the street. Those other boys are always batting and having fun. I see a grounder run full seam through Willie's legs like a rat racing for the, sew the sewer. Then a pop-up drops out of Willie's glove. Now that it's summer, we open our windows wide and play catch. Most days, I'm Sandy Koufax and he's Satchel Paige. Some days, we switch. So there is a picture of them playing catch together, baseball catch. Grandpa says Jewish kids shouldn't waste time with baseball. He thinks I should spend every minute practicing the violin. God gave you a brain, Abe, he says. Let those Negro boys play ball after Grandpa gives me a lesson, gives me my lesson. I go to my room and practice. Willie leans out his window and asks if he can play. I tell him where to rest his chin on the chin rest and how much rosin to slide across the hairs of the bow. All summer long, I teach him everything I learned. Willie's as natural as satchel on the mound. His fingers fly up and down the fingerboard like the pavement's too hot to set your bare feet on the ground. And here we see that Willie is playing the violin. You'll be the next Joshua Hefetz, Grandpa says proudly one night when he comes to turn out the light. I think you're ready for the recital at the temple next Tuesday afternoon. My palms turn sweaty like I've been caught throwing a spitball. I want to tell him it was Willie. 
but I can't think of anything to say. Grandpa was a great violinist in the old country, I tell Willie late that night. But there was a war, and the Nazis broke all of his fingers and worked him like a slave. Grandpa says he was lucky to escape with his life. Willie's real quiet now, and I wonder if I said something wrong. Maybe he doesn't know about the Nazis. My great-granddaddy was a slave, too, Willie finally says. I never knew any white folk that were. Then we're both real quiet until Willie decides that it's time we went to bed. All weekend I stay in my room practicing. Willie tells his daddy he's sick so he can stay in his room too. I know Willie should be working on his wind up. Tuesday, his daddy coaches baseball and Willie's pen penciled in to do the pitching. I take a break to practice my own windup, so I pass up, I pass my violin out the window to Willie. Soon, my arms spinning like a Coney Island Ferris wheel and his bows picking up so much breeze. There's not a single fly left to swat in the city. We're both working so hard, I don't even hear Grandpa open my door. First, Grandpa looks at me and then at Willie, and then he turns back toward me one more time. I'm holding my breath real tight. You'll be the next Joshua, Joshua Hafetz, Grandpa says, finally says, and then he shows Willie the correct position of his bow. Notice how Grandpa is looking in this photo. How is he looking? How do you think he feels? It's Tuesday afternoon and we're walking side by side like best friends and everyone, everybody's watching. Let people stare, Willie's daddy says as he steps ahead of Grandpa and into the temple. Ignorance comes in as many colors as talent. When Willie and his daddy sit down, most people get up and slide across the aisle. That opens up seats in front of Grandpa and me. Willie's first notes sound like the radio when I'm searching for the signal that announces the Dodger games. But then Willie closes his, his eyes, and you can tell by his face that he's found the right station. When Willie sits back down, the clapping is so loud. You'd think he just walloped a homer. I tell Willie he sounded great, but he's already rushing me out me toward the door. In half an hour, Willie's daddy is leading us to the sand lot and I'm penciled in to do the pitching. I'm standing still. My stomach feels like it's stuck riding the roller coaster. My first pitch flies over the batter's head. I stare down at my feet, but out of the corner of one eye, I see Grandpa standing between Willie and Willie's dad. They're all cheering me on. Oh, forgot to show you guys this. I stretch my fingers just so across the stitches and I spin my arms like the Coney Island Ferris wheel. My next pitch slides straight over home plate. The end.